Mr. President, dear participants, distinguished guests and friends, we are joined today by His Excellency Yoon Seokyun, President of the Republic of Korea, for a very special address. Mr. President, it's a great honor to welcome you here in Davos at such a critical juncture in both your leadership and the collective tasks that we face globally. I had the opportunity to meet with you just a few weeks after the presidential election, where I congratulated you and we discussed how to solidify the World Economic Forum's long-standing cooperation with Korea. I remember your commitment to attend the annual meeting, and here you are, your promise kept. I cannot express how deeply I appreciate and respect your dedication and eagerness to engage in reforms in your country in your very first year already as the President of the Republic of Korea, championing also global peace and prosperity. The Republic of Korea plays today an indispensable role, not only in terms of geopolitical security, but also in supp supply chain connectivity, industrial transition and climate change. The world, of course, has closely watched as you proclaimed to reinforce public-private cooperation, the essence also of the World Economic Forum, to meet all those challenges. The participants in this room, as well as the many others joining us online, are all eager to hear your vision for Korea in the world. Mr. President, once again, a very warm welcome to Davos. The floor is yours. Honorable participants and distinguished guests, first, I would like to thank Professor Schwab for organizing today's event. It is my honor to be here with you at World Economic Forum annual meeting, which boasts a more than half a century history since its original founding as the European Management Forum in 1971. The World Economic Forum has been contributing to empowering citizens around the world to enjoy greater freedom and building global peace and prosperity by serving as a venue for in-depth discussions on global agenda. It is truly meaningful for me to have an opportunity to be here with you today and seek ways for us to cooperate to overcome the numerous challenges we are facing. The world is under the pressure of economic uncertainty and the poly crisis. The pandemic, geopolitical conflicts, the rivalry for technological hegemony, and the weakening of multilateral trade system have led to the fragmentation of the global supply chain, causing it to reshape. The war in Ukraine has exacerbated supply chain disruptions. Supply shocks have occurred in various sectors Sectors, ranging from vaccines and pharmaceuticals to semiconductor and critical minerals that are the industrial backbones and to food and energy resources, which are the necessities for humanity. Supply shocks in these sectors have spilled over to the broader economy. During such reshaping of the global supply chain, cooperation between countries in the realms of security, economy, and advanced technologies has been increasingly regarded as a package deal, giving rise to the trend of block forming among countries. The crisis brought by climate change and the health and digital device are threatening the freedom of citizens worldwide and the international community's peace and prosperity. 
The way to overcome these challenges is for us to strengthen cooperation and unite in solidarity. As the boundaries between security, economy and cutting-edge scientific technologies are blurring, we not only need cooperation between businesses in the form of B2B cooperation, but also urgently need systems for G2G or G2B cooperation through which each nation's government and businesses in its private sector actively cooperate with one another. Even in the current global economic landscape marked by fragmentation, the free trade system, which has contributed to global economic growth and enhanced humanity's freedom, remains a global public good that can never be forsaken. Building up walls and intensifying protectionism cannot be the right answer. To be sure, the process of globalization has shed light on the problems of the financialization of the real economy and polarization. Even so, we must make, take, make efforts to rectify these issues and respect the free trade system based on multilateralism. By allowing the free flow of products, capital, knowledge, and information across borders, ensuring diversity, and expanding connectivity, we should expand our small block to form a larger block. During the UN General Assembly last September, I stressed in my speech that the first step in our journey to overcome the crisis and seek answers in this watershed moment is to respect the universal global norms and UN system and to unite in solidarity. The current situation, characterized by block forming, also calls for the global economic order's return to the free trade system based on the universal norms and the international communities strengthen solidarity and cooperation. When our commitment to contributing to empowering global citizens to enjoy greater freedom and building the international community's prosperity translates into specific actions, we can indeed tackle the pressing challenges ahead of us. Here at the WEF, I would like to call for strengthening the global supply chain's resilience for sustainable economic prosperity, a transition to a low-carbon economy aimed at aptly responding to the climate crisis and ensuring energy security, bolstering global cooperation to bridge the gaps in responding to health threats, and lastly, establishing a digital order contributing to freedom and prosperity for all. The most urgent task of our time is to strengthen the resilience of supply chain based on reciprocal solidarity. Making the global supply chain more resilient is also a task to be pursued in the spirit of freedom and solidarity. By forging robust solidarity among nations, we must establish a resilient supply chain and pursue the coexistence of citizens worldwide. The Republic of Korea, which boasts the world's top-notch production technologies and manufacturing capabilities in semiconductor, rechargeable batteries, steel making, and biotechnology will be a key partner in the global supply chain. We will align and cooperate with mutually trusted countries in full compliance with the universal rules in order to secure the global supply chain's stability. Meanwhile, the Co Korean government's recently announced Indo-Pacific strategy encapsulates our will to work with and innovate with nations that uphold the values of freedom, peace, and prosperity. We will contribute to prosperity for all humankind by developing economic and technological ecosystems marked by cooperation and inclusiveness. Tackling the climate crisis is another task of great importance for all of us. Overcoming the climate crisis has become a common agenda for all nations on Earth, and major economies are working to achieve their net zero targets. Although energy security is emerging as an urgent agenda to address, energy transition and energy security are not mutually exclusive goals. As a key means to bolster our energy security while reducing our reliance on fossil fuels, we must turn our attention to nuclear power and clean hydrogen.
Nuclear power plants enable a stable power supply while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The Korean government has already unveiled a plan to systematically pursue the carbon neutrality target by expanding the share of nuclear power in our energy mix, thereby bolstering our energy security. The Republic of Korea has world-class technological prowess in nuclear power generation, as well as outstanding nuclear power plant construction and operation capabilities, and is willing to work with nations that need to tap into nuclear power technology to achieve their carbon neutrality goals. Clean hydrogen is now receiving attention as a game changer for future energy. In hard to abate sectors such as steel, chemical and shipping industries, hydrogen can be a solution that plays a key role in achieving the goal of carbon neutrality. To this end, the Middle East and Europe that have great potential for green hydrogen production and the countries with advanced technologies in utilizing hydrogen, such as Korea and Japan, need to cooperate with each other. I hope that the international community can closely communicate with each other to design the Clean Hydrogen Certification Scheme and establish the standards and incentive policies on the production, utilization and distribution of hydrogen in the future. Through Green ODA, the Republic of Korea will further reduce the technological and financial gaps between countries and help developing countries adapt to climate change and mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Korea will continue to make efforts to share its innovative green technologies with all humanity. Honorable global leaders, the gap in the health system between countries poses a threat not only to individual freedom but also to sustainable prosperity of the international community. Korea has pledged to share its experiences and achievements in response to health crisis and join the international effort to bridge the gap in pandemic response capabilities between countries. In particular, we'll secure financing for the prevention of and response to pandemic while nurturing workforce in the biotechnology sector to boost vaccine production capacity. Korea will also take the lead in cooperating with other countries to respond to new infectious diseases in the future. The international community must work together to further develop vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics and other measures against infectious diseases and ensure equal access to them for global citizens. The same is true for the digital divide. In this era of great digital transformation, the digital divide is emerging as a new challenge. In response to such challenge, we need to build a global digital order so that digital technologies can help global citizens expand their freedom. The Korean government is to create the Digital Bill of Rights in Korea, which can contribute to the establishment of a digital order in the world. The Digital Bill of Rights in Korea will define the right to enjoy digital technologies as a universal right of humanity and propose the basic principles to resolve novel issues that may arise in an era of great digital transformation. The government of the Republic of Korea aims to create a digital platform government that marries government-owned data and private sector services based on the private sector's creative ideas as well as innovative technologies in AI, cloud computing, information processing and network will radically upgrade administrative services which will conduce to building an effective social safety net. As a leading country in digital technology, Korea has shared its digital government experiences with the developing countries and actively promoted digital ODA. We'll continue to make efforts to share and disseminate digital technologies and our experiences in the future. Honorable Professor Schwab and global leaders,
The structural problems the world is currently grappling with cannot be resolved without cooperation and solidarity. Our modern history has proven to us that an unwavering spirit of solidarity to protect and expand freedom is the most powerful force to overcome a crisis. The responsibility to present a better future to the next generation, the responsibility to expand freedom of global citizens, and responsibility to achieve sustainable peace and prosperity are calling for our stronger solidarity and solidarity in action. I hope the wisdom we share at this year's forum will serve as valuable resources to protect and expand the freedom and prosperity of global citizens. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you for outlining your policies and your speech has shown, I think, two things. First, um, how much the country is embracing the modern world, particularly the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, I coined this notion, and I know my book was most sold in uh, Korea, by the way, which shows how the country has embraced this notion of uh, the new technologies and it's the importance uh, of the fourth industrial revolution. But uh, you also um, outlined uh, particularly the role um, uh, the Republic of Korea is playing in the international geopolitical and geoeconomic context. Before asking um, uh, two or three questions, I just want to use this opportunity to welcome very much the very strong uh, delegation, business delegation, uh, which we have from uh, the Republic of Korea. We really have here public-private, uh, great public-private cooperation. Mr. President, in, um, in your speech, you highlighted very much uh, the uh, role um, uh, the supply chains are, are playing at this moment and the reshaping of supply chains which is taking place. And um, my question would be uh, what practical steps, what are the policies which you will undertake to make sure that in the supply chain reshaping of the world, Korea plays a major role? We need to restore and recover the supply chain, and there can be many types of supply chains that need to be restored within Korea. First of all, semiconductor is a prime example. Semiconductor is regarded as the main grain of the industrial activity, and it is the necessity of the modern society and modern industrial activity. Steady supply of semiconductor is necessary to underpin the modern industrial activity. However, due to many geopolitical conflicts and other factors, the semiconductor supply chain is currently experiencing block forming based on some technologies. At the same time, economic growth of the modern society is experiencing contraction at the moment. If possible, the semiconductor technologies that Korea has should be produced by and in many countries, and what can be shared with other countries should be shared. And where we have technological advantages or competitive edges, we need to pursue various cooperation 
projects and initiatives so that we can facilitate the steady supply of semiconductor. As the semiconductor technology is so important in the t today's era, of course, we might not be able to avoid the block forming among nations in this realm, but we will utilize all our resources and capabilities to strengthen cooperation and collaboration with other countries so that we can recover the semiconductor supply chain so it can contribute to the further industrial development of the world. Mr. President, I would like to come back to the issue of uh, energy uh, transition. Um, every country has to find the right equilibrium uh, between among three objectives uh, in this transition. Uh, it's, of course, affordability, it's resilience, and it's sustainability. Uh, could you tell us uh, you mentioned uh, also uh, your reliance on nuclear energy. Uh, could you tell us more about the strategy of your country to become uh, to, to become uh, to reach net zero? Uh, yes. Korea has largely relied on fossil fuels and it's been about over 40 years since we started a nuclear power generation. About a little over 20 percent of the energy supply is uh, coming from the nuclear energy. The Korean government pursued phase out policies to reduce nuclear power share in our energy mix. So that policy has been in place for a few years. So the nuclear power ecosystem uh, was in a difficult phase. To achieve a net zero target, the technological power should be strengthened for new renewable energies. And we should expand nuclear power generation a bit more. That's our plan. Regarding the nuclear power generation, in addition to constructing more nuclear power plants, we also wish to share our nuclear power technologies with other countries and through various ways of export and cooperation with those countries, we will make sure that nuclear power will be used as a main energy source in the international community as a major clean energy. energy. And in the new renewable energy sector, the government will be strongly pursue for the uh, technological use of the new renewable energies. So the wind power or the solar power will be actively used and will upgrade the technological uh, strength of these energies and through strong cooperation with the private sectors, we will share the technologies of the renewable energies and renewable energies with the international community so that we can develop those technologies all together. Mr. President, uh, I switch to a more political issue. We, we talk now very much when we look at the uh, reshaping of the global order, of the geopolitical order. We, I, I think you also uh, use this uh, term in your speech, like-minded countries or uh, coalitions based on values, coalitions based on mutual trust. Now, how do you plan in this context and foresee uh, Korea's relations with key partners in the region. Uh, of course, I'm thinking of China and Japan. And how will the strengthening of new alliances based on trust uh, impact peace and stability in the Korean pen Peninsula and the region in general?
There are countries that share universal values, and those countries that share the values will be key partners in our cooperation in economy and security. And this is an unavoidable choice for us. However, such phenomenon of block forming will lead to increased cooperation among like-minded countries. However, this is not about excluding any particular country, and it should not aim at excluding or distancing some countries, because that would not be aligned with the multilateral that have contributed to global prosperity. And Korea is a peace-loving country, and we aim to contribute to mutual prosperity for all and the international community's prosperity. Countries that would not invade us and that are willing to cooperate with us are potential partners that we are willing to cooperate in many different sectors, including climate action. We are open to cooperate with any country, with any system, as long as they share those values. Japan, just like the United States, share many of the universal values and have very similar economic and political systems. China, of course, has some differences from my country. However, Close cooperation with like-minded countries that share values, even if they have different political systems and show some differences, they would not be excluded from our realm of cooperation. We will become more inclusive and more converging when pursuing cooperation. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. This uh, concludes this uh, interesting uh, and very uh, important session on the Republic of Korea. Please give a big hand uh, to the President and to the business delegation.